Hello, it's uh, 1WorthA567, it's my newest Let's Play, it's Sojam and Earl, Pangon Funkatron, let's get right started, and we're somewhere in outer, outer space. First of all, I want to say sorry this didn't go up on Monday, it was supposed to, but I was sick over the recording time for this project, so I slept through it. I didn't even record. And yeah, we're going somewhere out here on the peaceful planet of Funkatron. We interrupt this program to bring you terrible news. Funkatron has been invaded by Earthlings. These strange aliens are scaring the local inhabitants. I hate those things. Making an awful mess. And generally being a nuisance. No one knows exactly how they got here. But it is believed that they clung to the outside of a returning spaceship. Owned by two teenage Funkatronians named... Toejam and Earl! Hehe, <laughs> that animation. We are in some hot, serious, serious hot water, Earl. Uh huh. So here's the plan. Find all the Earthlings. <laughs> trap them with our trapmatic jars. And ship them back to Earth. Presto, no more problem. Yeah, no more problem. And here's the main menu. We can play, enter a password. We can turn a little kid mode on or off. That means you won't have any lives lost, and you won't lose continues. And there's the music test. And here's controls. A is funk move, B will throw or drop jars, and C is your jump, leap, or swim. There's also three other buttons I'll go over later. You can set the text speed. You get medium, fast, and slow. If you can read all the text in this window, and you don't end up waiting too long for the window to go away, then the text speed is set properly. I was set to it's going to go way too slow. So I'll probably read most of it, if not all of it. Plus, you can always pause if it's too fast, people. Don't worry about me. I can wait. Except... Yeah, little kid mode is basically, you only get to play the first five levels, but you can't die and you can't game over. If you die, you just revive. You have infinite, so. And I'm going to be just Earl for this run. Big Earl. Here we go, we're going to start shaking trees. And yes, that tree did kind of make doubles. It does happen. 200 points. You're not missing anything wrong. It does happen. I even have it happen on when I first got the game. And, ooh, oh yeah, by hitting X on the 6-button controller, you're just playing Sega, or by hitting start and hitting A, you'll do a funk scan. And I'll find hidden things. I'll be doing this a lot. You can tell I'm playing on a 6-button controller, so I won't be hitting the start button that many times for you guys. We can push this around because we can. Another game tip. Just telling us what we can do. Here's three buttons. I'll tell you what the other two later are later on. You can see if you stay pot for too long, the music does go away. Don't get hit by that those tires or anything, like tires, trash cans, or whatever. You will take damage. Yeah, you've got 600 points. Funk scan, you can see we can see some of the objects. There's bowling balls, and if we jump up here. Yes! Super jars. Sweet. Another person there, but I'm gonna go this way first. All right, 500 points. Points do give you extra lives, and super jars we're gonna be loving throughout the project. Each one of these you get, use wisely. Okay, nothing else up here. You don't want to lose them. I was saying I was sick this weekend, so I missed the recording date. So this is actually being recorded on Monday, the first day I was actually healthy at the Super Bowl. 
or the Super Snorfest, whichever one you want to call it. I mean, no offense, it was a good game played for like, Seattle, but I was expecting more of a match, thank you very much. <sighs> but now that we got a of our system, there's a human in that tree and we're going to shake it out. That's right, they'll hide in trees. You may notice that during the opening, it took a few hits with the jars to trap them. Well, the people. Now with super jars. Any, any human, one hit, one catch. Yes, you want these as much as you can. Fungus. Land on your feet and hold the jump button and you'll go higher. I'm sorry I didn't get to explain that at the first one. And get that one, that's third earthling. I'll go with the indicator soon. Just one thing. Welcome to the... The Hyperfunk Zone, people. This is where you can get a lot of points. What you want to do is grab the presents while you're all staticky. And the clocks, you need to grab the clocks. The upper right hand corner is your time. If you run out, it's over. There is a reason why you want to do this! Oh, and don't hit those blue pattern thingies or you will warp out. And you don't want to do that. Good, I didn't do it. Okay, come on, there's two more clocks. Okay, got you. Missed that one. Okay, didn't get that. Okay, got that present. You want to do these. I'm probably not going to do enough of them to get what I want, but you might. I'll try to show you what happens if you do off screen, but I'll be honest, I never did a playthrough. I'm going to run out of time. So you can see what happens if you run out of time on my first run. Yet, yeah, you actually stop and exit. As you can see, you get a good amount of points. I'll probably start off screening these unless I have a good run or I have something to show. So I'll show you this one off in its entirety, but prepare to see him get skipped unless I have something good happen or something interesting. Like a glitch or something. Those beam thingies you don't want to run into. By hitting any of the three buttons, you will slow. You'll turn into that mini warp thingy. That little. I don't want. I don't know what to call it. The squiggle. You want to do this to get around them. You'll also avoid any other hazards like the exits, or any presents, or anything that you want. So be careful. You need to time. You can't just hold the button down and run. Okay, I'm going. It does take a little bit of skill, but it's not impossible. But you want to grab all the presents. That's how you clear a zone. I think you have to do it twice to go to the next zone. Once you do that, I, you unlock a third zone. Then you get your reward if you can do that twice. If I remember correctly. And I've read on it. So I'm hoping it's true. If it happens this project, I will be ecstatic. Because having this makes the game so much easier, but you don't need it. I've beaten the game without it before. But it makes life so much easier if you do have them. Trust me, I'll give you a taste of what it is later, but... <laughs> it's nothing like the real deal. Oh, by the way, I'll go to the bomb screen real quick. To the left is your funk. That's what runs your funk scans and your well, your funk well, your funk move. I'll show you that a little later. You'll be using that a lot in this game. The next thing you got is your coins. Those are what you use to feed the meters. That's right. That's your only use feeding meters in this game. You don't order packages. You don't order anything else. It's just feed meters. And we've officially completed our first Hyperfunk Zone! Yay! Zone. Earl and Toe Jam had the health bars next to them. In two-player mode, if you high-five each other by ducking next to each other, you will actually even out your health bars. Seeing as we're playing single-player, that does not matter. Earl's, toe, Earl's health bar is matching orange, and Toe Jam's is, as you can guess, red. Next, and they'll always be in that position, by the way. Doesn't matter who, you, if you're playing one, two, whatever. It's always going to be Toe Jam on top, Earl on bottom. 
Next to that, you got your human indicator, which you can't see until I exit the hyperfunk zone, because I know I messed up. It'll tell you where the nearest human is. Note I say nearest. Because, well... <laughs> sometimes it might not be that accurate. I'm gonna feed these meters. Just hold up next to something to feed the coin. Sorry if, you, if I didn't tell you yet. Oh, and by the way, food does restore your health. I'm trying to explain so much in so little time. And yeah, sometimes you'll find hidden platforms and stuff, and ooh, we can go in here. What if I do? Ooh, a secret spot. Okay, continuing on, right next to the human indicator is... Panic Button. That is a special move I'll show you later. It's a lot of fun to use, and there are good times to use it. And next to that is the almighty Funk Vac. Think of that as a screen nuke. You can get a lot of points if you use it correctly, and there are some good enemies you want to use it on. Trust me, I'll tell you certain enemies you want to use it on, and certain times where it'd probably be best to use one. Right now I'm going to keep looking. You could hit the other button up there, but I don't recommend doing it, because, well, you want to go this way just so you can get some more goodies. You like goodies, right? Okay, there is something there. Hit it. Not what I wanted. Okay, get. By hitting down while you're in the air and hitting B, you'll do that drop move. I do that drop move so many times in the air, it helps a little bit for some enemies, but others are, well, you know. Oh, once you jar all the earthlings, you can actually leave the stage. You have to actually jar all of them, so it could be a finding maze. Once you do, you'll get the green arrow. That's your sign. Can get out of here. And that is what we're gonna do as soon as I. I thought I hit that. Either way, there's cake. I'll you get some food. I hope I got it. Blue flags tell me where to go. Don't go in that door because it'll lead you to where you could have pressed that button. That's right, it's a screen warp. Okay, got another coin. Good jump for it. Miss. Go hop out. Let's see what's in here. Ooh, right, 100 points. Hooray! I'm gonna go in here. Ooh, a 300 point present. 500. Oh, you do get point. You do get extra life points. 10,000 is a life. Over here. Time it. Got it. By the way, that was a funk move. By hitting A, you actually warp a little bit. This costs one funk to use. It's like one funk scan is one funk as well. And now we're swimming. Well, underwater, you can't use any of your abilities. You can't use Funk Moosh, you can't use anything. But, in fair trade, there are no humans in the water at all. However, you are timed. If you run, you start with 40 air. I want to say seconds, but I'm not sure. I want to say they are seconds, but... It be a little faster or a little slower, I can't tell. But you want to get out of there before you run out of time. And yeah, I'm just going to funk scan here to see the same items, and we're going to jam with Peebo. Jamming's pretty easy, but it gets hard quickly. You want to copy him exactly. I mean, you got to do the exact same beat. If you do, this happens. Now, I say it's easy now, but it gets hard fast. Oh, mm. I hope I did it right. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Thank you. Let's do that one more time, because that would be the last time we can do this, because the thing went away. Oh, jeez. Did I get it? Darn it! I was so close. It's been off just by a few seconds. Boom. Clap. Clap. Come on, controller! Sega Genesis is the first control system I own, so I only have two controllers, and, well, this is pretty old. I mean, very old. I'm a little, so it's a little slow in the uptake, don't worry. You do get a lot of funk from it, but it's 
something like critical. And here's the end of the stage, the rocket pad. In the stage, you put all the humans in the ship and send them home. Only if you have them all. Hi, ready to go to the next level? Uh huh. Did you get all the Earthlings here? Yeah, got them. Okay, get ready. Ready. And we are off. So we'll end the episode here. I might put up another one today or tomorrow to catch us up. I hope you had fun, and I'll see you on the next one. Episode 2 will be Homely Street. Well, Homey Street. <laughs>